I don't know how many of you know this, but many of the verses of the Rig Veda are written by women. Now show me any religious tradition anywhere in the world where the holiest and the oldest of the books are written by women. Show me one religious tradition anywhere outside of the Dharmic traditions where women have written the holy texts of that particular tradition. You will not find it anywhere else on this planet. So that is Vedic culture. That is Indian culture. Women always had the utmost respect in Indian society. Like you say, they used to go to war. There are many instances of, of Indian women going into war. This Sanawali excavation that I spoke about just a while ago, it has unearthed the, the royal burial of a female warrior. So that is again evidence that women had the highest of respect and the highest of responsibilities. And they could go to war just like men. Right. So women used to do everything, everything that uh, that was uh, appropriate based on the female biology and anatomy, right? But they used to go to war as well. So it's not like women were prevented from doing things when it was required. And women, like you said, they were in ashrams. They even wrote the hymns of the Rig Veda, many of the hymn, hymns of the Rig Veda. There was this very famous uh, uh, scholar called Gargi in Vedic times who could, uh, who, could, uh, who could essentially intellectually outdo any man of her time and she had the highest of respect and honor. So that is the history of women in India. When did things change? Actually, things changed only very recently. Uh, there is this uh, scholar called uh, Dharampal who did a survey, who did a statistical uh, data collection of, of the data the British themselves had collected before they, impl the, they imposed the Macaulayan system of education. So they did a great vast survey of the Indian indigenous education system and they discovered that boys and girls were equal. They were treated equally. Both boys and girls were given education to all uh, levels in the pre macaulayan indigenous Indian education system. So even during the British era, boys and girls were treated equally. They both got the same education. And there was no so-called caste divide or anything, or anything. Everybody got an education. Even the so-called what is now classified as Dalits, etc. Everybody got an education. These are colonial myths. So how did this... Uh, there is definitely a different treatment of women in India in the past few hundred years. And that is a consequence of the foreign invasions and foreign occupation. So there was a time when men and women, they used to wear very little clothing in India because of the climate of India, which is hot and humid. If you see ancient paintings, Ajanta Elora, if you see ancient carvings, sculptures everywhere, anywhere in the, in the country, wherever sculptures and carvings have survived, you will find that men and women wear basically topless. They did not wear any shirt or anything on the top. Sometimes they used to cover it with a thin cloth or something. And that was perfectly fine. There was no shame or any such thing. That was the mode of dressing of the ancient days. So how did women start wearing this enormous saris and covering their faces and all that? That happened after the Turkic invasions when this foreign culture came into India, which regarded women as pieces of meat. So that's why women had to start hiding and they had to, they had to retreat inside the household and men had to stay outside and go and face the world. That's how this entire so-called apparent patriarchal customs started. It was a survival mechanism. It was a defense mechanism. That was the only way you could preserve the dignity of your women. So that's how they started. And the and after the Mughals or the Turks were defeated by the British, uh, by sorry, not by the British, by the Marathas, by, by Chhatrapati Shivaji. And that's what the British took advantage of after they defeated the Marathas themselves. So the British brought in their own twisted morality, the Victorian and whatever else morality. In the West, women are treated in an atrocious manner. I mean, just look at the witch hunting and witch burning and all that that, that is present throughout the medieval ages of Europe. The most popular book in the medieval ages in Europe was the Maleus Maleficarum, the hammer of the witches, which prescribed different horrible ways of torturing and killing women who were accused of being witches. Now, how, when was a woman accused of being a witch? When she had some ancient knowledge, some pre-Christian knowledge, which dated back to the ancient Indo-European culture. So that was a way of stamping out the ancient indigenous culture of Europe. And it, it was a way of, of putting women in that place. And that is the morality that the British brought into India. And then they enforced that in a variety of ways. So it is these 
backward, primitive, foreign influences in India that brought about the decline of the status of women. In India's indigenous culture, women always had the highest of regard, the highest of respect, and the highest of status. Or in the highest of status. That's what we have always seen throughout India's history. Look at the stories of the Mahabharata, the Ramayan, the other tales, the other uh, anecdotes, all the other evidence that comes comes forth. Look at the status that uh, Maharani Ahilya Bai Holkar had. Right? I mean, just look at the great women of this country and the things they have done. You will not see any woman anywhere else in the world who would do anything like that. So that is the status that women had in India. It is regrettable that things changed and we should we should hearken back to who we truly are